What's up guys, it's Cody here, and welcome to the very first episode of the brand new Nimix YouTube series where we're going to talk about who we are, what we do, and how we do it. And hopefully we'll be at least a little bit entertaining along the way. So if you're brand new to Nimbix, or if you've been with Nimbix for a long time, and you just want to put some faces to names, then this is going to be the place to do it, because you're going to meet some of the people on the team in these videos. So if you guys want to be updated every time that we push out a video once a month, be sure you hit that subscribe button and you'll get that notification. But let's go ahead and get into the actual meat of this video, and that's where we're going to talk about what is Nimbix. So who is Nimbix and what does Nimbix do? So let's start at a really high level and give a basic understanding to people that are new to this type of platform. And then a little bit later in the video, I'll hand it off to Mark and he's going to explain a little bit more of the technical details that some of you guys are looking for. So let's start at a high level and let's start with the basics. So first and foremost, we are a supercomputing platform. That means that we have data centers full of supercomputers that run your work for you. So if you have computationally heavy workloads like fluid dynamics, thermal dynamics, bioinformatics, seismic processing, 3D modeling, simulations, I could go on forever. Nimbix is the place where you want to be running your workloads because we have an infrastructure called Jarvis that does everything for you. Well, everything but human interaction and human decision making. Of course, your jobs are still safe for now. Everything that can be automated is automated. And Jarvis can basically do anything another computer can do, except it's faster. So just to give you kind of a reference here, if you're comparing a standard consumer PC to one of our supercomputers, the PC on your desk probably has, you know, quad core processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, and a consumer grade GPU. I mean, and that's really all that you need if you're just gonna be checking your email, surfing the web, playing games at 60 frames per second, getting on Reddit, wasting time. You know, anything that you would do normally on a computer, you don't need a supercomputer. And your PC is not built for computationally heavy workloads like fluid dynamics or thermal dynamics or anything like that. That's where we step in. But with the Nimbic server, the new standard is 20 cores per machine. And you can go up to a terabyte of RAM per machine. And if you want to, you can throw in four GPUs into that machine. So hopefully it's not very far-fetched to say that this supercomputer is going to absolutely destroy this consumer grade PC when it comes to computationally heavy workloads. Now the cool thing is about Jarvis and what we built our entire company on is the ability to scale that supercomputer. So let's just say that you want your results today and you have a huge data set that's going to require more than one of these supercomputers. Well, you can take it up to three supercomputers. If that's not enough, we can do 10. If that's not enough, there's literally a slider right on your screen, right before you hit the submit button for your job that allows you to slide it all the way up to 2,000 cores. And if you need more than 2,000 cores, we're happy to accommodate, just let us know. And it doesn't matter how many cores you spin up, once you hit that job submit button, you're gonna have that environment up and running within seconds. That's what Jarvis does. So that's a little bit about Nimbix, and I just wanted to give you an overview. So now that you have a basic understanding at a high level of what Nimbix does, I'm going to hand it over to Mark to give you a more technical explanation of how Nimbix works. How you guys doing? This is Mark, and I'm going to go into a little more detail about what we do here at Nimbix and the architecture around that. We are the first cloud company to deploy computational accelerators, that just means FPGAs and GPUs, and we're the first to utilize containerized environments on bare metal machines. So Nimbix runs on containers. Why does that matter? Well, containers are better than VM. A VM is always going to require a hypervisor, and that's just going to steal your CPU and RAM from you. So, that means that running the same hardware on a competitor as you're running in Nimbix, you're going to get faster performance in Nimbix just because we're not running that hypervisor. Immediately, you already have an advantage. Next, you need to enable your application, right? Well, not necessarily. Nimbix has a huge application catalog, and that means that we have applications enabled for both x86 and power architectures. This means while in other clouds you have to spend hours enabling your application, in Nimbix you can just upload your job and start your computation. So, I mentioned applications enabled on other architectures, and you may be asking yourself, why does that matter to me? Well, let me tell you why. We've seen significant performance increases when it comes to power architectures. So where you may be used to using x86 architectures, Power has really got an advantage for many of the workloads that you might be interested in running. Historically, porting applications would mean a lot of work. With Nimbix, we've done all that work for you. And so if the application's available to you, I'd highly recommend giving it a try. So while we have tons of apps in our application catalog, but of course we're aware we can't have them all. So we've created an easy to use platform called Push to Compute for application enablement. And Push to Compute leverages Docker to make app enablement simple and quick. We'll cover Push to Compute in more detail in a later video. But now let's look at what it looks like to launch a job inside Nimbix. So once you're logged in, you're going to click on the Compute tab. 
From here, we can search for any application we'd like to run. In this instance, we're going to run ANSYS 18 Electronics. So I click on the app card, then you're presented with this screen. From here, we're going to select Electronics Desktop. Now we get to define the size of the cluster, the machine type we're going to run on, and which version of ANSYS we'd like to use. So you can see from the drop down here that we have several different machine types you can run on. You can also define your cluster size right here. This is going to be anywhere from 16 cores all the way up to several thousands, depending on the job you're running. And then in this last drop down, we have all the different ANSYS versions that you can run on. Then just hit submit and it'll take you straight to your dashboard and your job will start up in just seconds. So now we've covered how Nimbix works from bare metal to GPUs all the way up to Xilinx FPGAs. And that short tutorial hopefully showed you how easy it is to run a job in Nimbix. So why don't you give it a try? All right guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and this is our very first episode. So if you have some constructive criticism, be sure to leave it in the comments below. Again, if you guys wanna be updated every time that we put out one of these episodes, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you'll get notified once we push these out once a month. All right guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.